Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm by our porch area that we had all decked out for fall and there's still some remnants of what was there, but we have done a lot of cleanup already. I do have some more container clean out to do. And the main goal of today is to get all of those things that are perennial or shrubs and get them moved out into the landscape. And I wanted to walk you through that process because I mention it often, but rarely show it. So it's just a little backed up look at what we're dealing with. I've got some containers. I actually filled these up with soil right here with the intention of planting them to be part of the fall decorations. Never got around to it, so they've just sat there looking like that. We had corn stalks in the big uh, gallery squirrel urns. There's one on either side here. And then flanking those, I've got these containers that have little lime hydrangeas. There's one in each container, and we need to get those out in the landscape. And then I just wanna clean out most of the other stuff this still looks really good. I might be able to use that somewhere else. But for the most part, I just kind of want to get this area buttoned up and, and cleaned. Right here, this is like part two of this decorating project. We moved these urns up here and there were purple fountain grass. There are purple fountain grass, but they were looking a lot better than this. They need to be cleaned out as well as the mums. Now these are perennial mums, but I don't usually bother to plant them. Um, I just do fresh ones mostly every year if I even do mums. Um, I usually skip it. But we've got a dogwood. This is called, I think, a hedgerow gold. I'll look it up and make sure that that's the name. But this is a fairly large growing shrub. Um, so I've got some areas in our back formal garden where this can go. This kale still looks really good. So maybe I can put the kale and that cabbage together. I kind of want to clean these out because they're just looking a little mangy. I mean, there are a few little viola flowers left, but you know, I could take these in and press them or dry them. Um, but I'm not sure that I want to use all of these containers for our winter display. And then up in here, I need to remove the garland. I need to do a little bit of wreath repair. And then we need to get the Japanese maples, which were a gorgeous centerpiece for fall, but they've lost their leaves now. We need to get those out and planted in the landscape. And I'm not sure I'm gonna get anything extra planted today or done in terms of a winter display. My main goal is just to get them cleaned out and get everything planted that needs to be in the ground. So I've mentioned this whole process a lot of times, like how using perennials and shrubs and trees and containers is so nice because you get double duty. You get to enjoy them in a container and then you can put them out in your landscape later and enjoy them for years to come. And so you kind of stretch your budget that way um, by utilizing your plants, you know, twice um, but it gets a little tricky uh, toward the latter part of the growing season because here we are mid-november it's not the best time of year to be planting however i feel like getting things in the ground as opposed to trying to winter them over in containers is much better for the plant so long as you can keep them moist but we're getting enough moisture at this point i'll water them in today if I even need to it's we've had so much rain it's probably pretty muddy where all these plants are going um, and they're just much better insulated all the way around. But when you use plants like this in spring and summer containers, it's perfect because as you're cleaning spring containers out for summer or summer containers out for fall, then you can easily move your plants to the landscape and they have plenty of time to root in. The rule of thumb is planting things six to eight weeks before your first hard frost so that things have a chance to acclimate. But like I said, I feel like these plants are, will do better in the ground as opposed to in containers. And we've been given a little bit of a gift in terms of weather this week. It's supposed to almost approach 60 degrees a few of the days um, and really hover uh, just about at freezing or just above. So I think it's gonna be perfect transition, at least give them a few days before it gets any colder to kind of cozy into their new spots. So what I'm gonna do is just work on getting these pots cleaned out and then Erin is gonna come out and help me dig holes. I think there's six things total we need to get in the ground. goodness no wonder I had to tug a little harder look at this fountain grass the roots grew all the way down through the drain hole <laughs> and I wondered why I was having some drainage issues well there you go that'll do it that'll plug it right up
All right, little progress update. I'm left with a cabbage and a vinca trailing out of the front of that pot. I've got an ornamental kale and a tater tot arb left in this little grouping. And then in these containers here, we've got a carex, which is this grass right here, a fern that still looks really nice, a pansy and a viola. And I think because I'm not really ready yet to winter or Christmas this spot out, <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna meld all the plants that I have left together in the two pots flanking the doorway. I think we could make something kind of pretty and it'll kind of bridge the gap between now and when all my Christmas greens arrive, which I don't think I'll be here for the next week or 10 days or so. fall containers take two that worked out perfectly I can't even believe it there's cheddar trying to eat the grass cheddar hey hey what are you doing quit eating the grass so we've got our thriller with the kale we've got the little tater tot tucked in there the ornamental cabbage the vinca the carex the fern is tucked in right here I can hardly see it that one was kind of actually a little bit on the small side and then a little bit of color. So it'll be fun to have that there until I'm ready to deck it out. And then here's how the window boxes look right now. A Little bit of yellow, pansies popping out, but just very kind of uniform and tidy-ish. That ivy's out of control. So I actually think next spring I wanna remove all the window boxes from the house. We are having our house painted next spring, hopefully early in the spring. It's something that keeps bumping down our priority list of things to do, but it's kind of come to a point where we really need to have it done. Um, and we need to have some shutter repair work done things like that, like the unfun stuff to spend money on, but it's kind of a good time to remove all the window boxes, let all of that work be done and have everything fresh. Then I think I wanna buy just three window boxes. Two to go on this porch area, maybe something a little bit more decorative and something black, and then something that matches for our kitchen window and just have the three. I think that'd be really nice and a little less overwhelming to be honest to have three rather than nine. Nine window boxes is a lot to fill for the whole season because I like to have most of my containers full every single season and especially when they're right up against the house you kind of feel like you need to have stuff in them and I've fallen down on that job for I think all the years <laughs> that we've had them so they've been a little bit of an eyesore during the winter time um, but these right here I always prioritize because they're by an entry door repaired the wreaths for now we have not had our new light installed that we opened up in a mail time that matches this one but it's on the electrician's list so hopefully that will be done pretty quick. And I decided just to go ahead and leave the garland up there because I will probably replace it with a Christmas or you know greens kind of garland. Um, and I'll just swap it out when I get ready to do that. I'm just kind of happy with the simplicity of these two containers right here. And here is my cart load. There's the big root ball of the purple fountain grass. I still can't believe that. I was looking at it closer and it even pinched the drip tubing. See that, it's flat. So it was constricting water up into the container. And we were having to water it extra, but then the plants up top were languishing because the water kept pooling. No wonder. I mean, this is thick right here. Gosh. Then we've got our two little limes right there. I actually had a third one in the greenhouse. I'm gonna plant all three of them. Uh, the baskets, I'm just gonna clean these out. I'll pour this soil. I didn't have any issues with uh, insects, so I'll pour the soil out in the new property. And these will just go into storage. They stay pretty nice since we use an interior plastic sleeve. And there are our two dogwoods and our two maples right there. And there's my starter fertilizer, which we are still gonna use today. And I've got a shovel, but I just need to go get Aaron now. What is going on here? Hey boys, what are you doing? And honestly, I could probably manage digging these holes. They're not gonna need to be very big, but I think I should be able to milk this pregnancy just a little. Would you come help me dig the holes? Sure. Also, do you think we could fit this uh, pop-up bag into the trailer? Heck yeah. I got it a little bit too heavy. Hold on, let me reorganize here. Is this being saved? Uh, these are the plants we're planting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is not garbage, You're Aaron. Not composting these things? No, I'm not, I'm not composting those. Do we need the huh? shovel in there? Well, yeah. But we're do not you... doing it here. We're... Right. Do you want a shovel to dig holes or do you want to dig them with your bare hands? 
I wonder how long that would take to dig with your bare hands. I don't know, Clark Griswold did it for his Christmas tree. To the chicken coop. Okay. Okay, well one of the maples is going right back here and then the three hydrangeas are going along the north side here because it actually gets quite a lot of sun because this building is too small for like lots of shade. Okay guys, so I think I want to plant the Japanese maple, one of them, right in here. And then I want to come in with a viburnum. Like maybe a, there's a new one coming out called Shiny Dancer. And then maybe Cotoneasters around the bottom, but I don't have any of those plants right now. So Japanese maple right there. And then we're going to put the three little limes right here. I think it's going to be a perfect spot. Um, last year, no, this year I didn't plant anything right here, Erin. Nothing. Last year I planted coleus and some surefire begonias. Yeah. But I think uh, just a little hedge of little limes will be beautiful right I'm there. I'm surprised you didn't plant anything here this last year. Well, I wasn't feeling super great at that time. All right, so let us get these four plants in the ground and then I'll show you what this section looks like and then we're gonna go into the back formal garden. Also, I did mention that I'm using the Biotone Starter Fertilizer and you might think like, why are you using, do I have something in my hair? Yeah, leaf. leaf. Why are you using uh, fertilizer this time of year when everything is dormant? Well, the roots aren't dormant. Roots are still working underneath the soil surface and I feel like getting some biotone in there um, for it to utilize maybe even a little bit right now and then it can pick up and utilize it in the spring again. So it's not really, it doesn't have enough time to go anywhere. So we're still gonna put some in the hole and I think we'll be good to go for next spring. Well, this one just needs to grow on a little bit. This is a blood good Japanese maple and the tag says that they'll get 20 to 25 feet tall I think and like 10 to 15 feet wide. They never get that big here. We just don't have the sort of climate that they thrive in. Um, so what are the two cats doing over there? See I'm coming out of the barn. At least they're not fighting. Anyway so we can get away with putting them fairly near structures and things like that because they act more as kind of a large shrub than a tree but I think that'll be really nice color right there. And then around the side here, we've got our little limes, which that is gonna be, it already looks pretty, even though they're dormant. It looks nice to have something there. Now this variety grows three to four feet tall and wide, and it's a zone three through eight, I believe. So super winter hardy. And I think they're gonna be gorgeous right here. This spot I struggled with because I thought it got more shade than it actually does. So I think, hey Russell, you match the hydrangeas a little bit. I think this is gonna be a good look for this area. I've got cat's pajamas nepeta around the base of this pot, so I can continue on with something really fun underneath the hydrangeas next season. And as I've been planning out areas for next year, I really wanna make an effort on, to add more perennials and shrubs and things like that so that we have areas that are a little bit more permanent instead of using so many annuals every year, which is fun, but we've got a lot of space. So I would love to have more stuff that comes back every year. All right, we got three left to plant. These should be a little easier because they're not gonna be near where a tree once lived. So we're in the back garden right now and in this long run, this flower bed, I've hardly done anything in here. Um, and we've got two different kinds of ground cover back here. There's a Campanula and I think, I don't know, something else. Anyway, I was thinking that that other Japanese maple will be really good right here. Right in between the two groups of ground cover, Erin. Okay. And I hope that this is easier digging for you. Right here? Yeah. How big a hole? Well, about the same size as the last hole. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And there it is. Looking awesome. You can see Christmas lights. We'll have a tour of those here in the next couple weeks, maybe. I think one of the dogwoods can go right here, and then the other one I'm thinking over kind of close to the coop, actually. 
So I anticipate this one growing about the same size as the black lace elderberry. So we keep it trimmed off the fence, but it should fill in this spot really nicely. And I really like the leaf variegation. I think that's really pretty. And they're supposed to get really bright red stems. All right, one left. Where at? I think close to the bird bath over there. Oh by the pergola where we were just at, okay. you know. I think right in here, I've got some Mary Rose, David Austin roses right there and then a smoke bush. So I think having another kind of gold color to mix in there will be really nice. So I'm thinking Aaron, maybe like right there. Okay. Oh, that was like a one shovel hole. Yes. Maybe, maybe a two one shovel more. hole. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Well, your your chores are done. <laughs> My chores are done. <laughs> and there's the last one. I think that's gonna look really pretty, especially if I leave a little bit of the blue fescue in there. That'll give me my green, my blue, my yellow, and my red, which are the four colors that I always try to look for in a landscape, or try to plan into a landscape, rather. And maybe a little bit of orange. Orange is always welcome. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for today's project. I do still need to water everything that I planted, including the pots. I have to haul water at this point, though, because we've blown out all of our sprinklers. We've got three uh, hoses that are frost freeze, and they're kind of a, a great distance away from all the plants that we just put in the ground. So I'll have to go get a watering can and give each one of them a nice thorough drink just to get everything settled in. But after that, unless we have a really long dry spell, I shouldn't really need to worry about anything that went in the ground. They're all really really hardy plants and they should do really well. I'm especially happy and excited about this right here, these hydrangeas. And it won't be long before we're back up at that patio getting it all decked out for Christmas. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful just seeing the process even this late in the season that it can still be done. If you can dig holes in the ground, your plants are better off in the ground than they are in their pots. Way easier on you, way easier on the plants. So anyway, thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.